Hey, Garage fam. Welcome back to another episode of Garage Talk presented by Hooters. Right now, if you download the Hooters app or you get over to order.hooters.com and use promo code GARAGEGUYS, you can save $10 on any $30 or more to-go order and $40 or more dine-in order. All you got to do is use promo code GARAGEGUYS at checkout, and that offer is valid at participating locations for delivery and carryout orders, and I guess dine-in orders too, $30 or $40 or more. That's dine-in Dale. Um, yeah, yeah. Hey, look, all you got to do is tell your Hooters waitress about promo code Garage Guys, and she will hook you up with $10 off any $40 plus order valid at HOA locations for food, non alcoholic beverages, and merchandise. You know, we're always hooking you up. Hooters hooking everybody up, all racing fans all over the world. And you're going to have a great time when you head out there and use promo code Garage Guys. Our guest probably has used promo code Garage Guys too. It's Chris Hacker. The man, the myth, the legend, back uh, for his second time on Garage Talk. The Hacker Man, Hacker Man 3000, uh, a.k.a. uh, Slumdog, not from (laughs) India, a.k.a. the legend man, the racist trucks, and shits his pants at Magic Tricks. What's up, dog? (laughs) What's up, big dog? How you doing? It's good to see you again, man. We we hadn't seen you since Daytona. Uh, It was a, a fun time, a very, very wild night and experience that we had uh we'll definitely have to talk all about it you got to race at daytona which was awesome to see with your sponsors morgan and morgan just just tell tell us how life's been man how, how is how, how are we feeling we, we look the the big froze gone yeah the r.i.p gone. yeah r.i.p honestly it was a uh, it was going to be way too much and then uh i chopped a lot of it off before phoenix last year and i wasn't really rocking with the long on top still so i just told him to do a three on the top one on the sides and now now everybody says i look like some jesus so so we're, we're rolling with it but <laughs> but <laughs> Couple of the ladies have told me to grow it back out, but they're not really too persuasive. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it for a little bit. So Dude, that was I'm not gonna lie, when I was going through college, like I would I constantly went back and forth on the short hair, grow it back out. And I, I won't lie, the ladies had a, an impact on the grow it back out kind of thing up until I started oh, yeah. dating somebody. So like I get it. I get it. <laughs> so I hate it. In the peer pressure. Yeah, I get it. Look, I totally understand. And real quick, I just kind of got this thought, like Chris was, or Chase was calling you the Hacker Man, Hack Man. What's your favorite? Is there a, a nickname that you like that you prefer over anything? Because there's so many things you can do with, like, with just with Hacker is your last name. There's so yeah. many different directions you could go. I mean, I don't really have a favorite, but I feel like Hacker Man is the one that's really like kind of popped off and stuff like throughout the fan base. So, so I've just been like kind of rolling with that. We always have it on top of the the name rails and stuff. But I mean, I mean, the worst I've gotten so far is Computer Hacker. I don't really, I don't really mess with that one. I'm just like, I honestly barely even know. How that's to pretty play. lame. Yeah, I was like, I barely know how to turn my computer on, so I'm I'm far from that. But but Hacker Man is there. Who you hang out with? To call you that? Huh? Kind of nerds you hanging around that call you um bro all sports are nerds <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. about have you, uh, you said that people are telling you look like slim jesus oh, uh yeah. yeah um what do you have nicknames you grew up with that aren't related to your last name like because i mean you um, have an afro like it, i feel like i feel like dudes with fros are more prone to get some kind of some kind of funny nickname you know what i mean like so I, the biggest one that was like outside of like my last name is I like low key hit puberty super late. So I was I was racing against adults, like still like pretty much five foot tall. And so like they would always call me smalls. But but other than that, bro, honestly the nicknames haven't really came my way. Uh, not at all, which which I, I probably need to work on. I need to get some homies to to write a list out, some some badass nicknames for me. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Yeah. I know. Uh, I know. The first time we ever met, for for those of you that are watching, that have maybe never seen the first garage talk we had with Chris, it was just me and Chris. I found Chris. Uh, found out about Chris on a Facebook group thread. <laughs> where people were calling him a sex god. Chris Hacker, the sex god, is when he had the fro. Makes sense. Total sense. Now I also googled a picture of Slim Jesus. 
and uh, I can definitely see the resemblance, <laughs> kind of. Except you don't have like you know like that. You don't really have a meth chin, so you're doing all right. Yeah, yeah. Wait, I'm, is I'm, Slim is Slim Jesus a person? Is that I'm actually like? Yes. Okay, I need to. I, I I had no idea. I thought they were just referring to some shady. I didn't even know Slim Jesus was a whole different person. Oh, no, no. Yeah, hold on. I'm about to look that up. That's yeah. Cool. So while we're I talking about this, too. While, while he's looking up Slim <laughs> Jesus, you see the meth chin? Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. A little. His, his, his real yeah. name's Robert Church. How have I never heard? I, I feel like I've seen this guy before, but definitely, yeah, definitely too much meth to, yeah. to be a, a super to, accurate comparison. Just, just a little bit, a little bit too much. <laughs> if either of y'all have not heard any of Slim Jesus's raps, please go to YouTube after this. <laughs> watch them. It, it, was he? It will make your day. Was he on Tosh.0? Oh? Is that where I've seen him? I think so. Tosh.0? Oh? I think he was, yeah. Dude, he looks so familiar. He has a big following, though. I like that. Know. That's some that's some old stuff. They've been around for a minute. That's what I love about you, Chris. Is like you remember the OG shit, and like you're you, oh, yeah. you're actually like young. How old are you? How old am I? I'm 23 right now. 23 right yeah. now. There there is yeah. room for more age to come. <laughs> and that's oh, yeah. You. I love that. But but talking about what what we were getting back to before Slim Jesus uh, interrupted us with his chin. Um, with his meth. Yeah. I uh so the the sex god meme had started out. I made this post where I had like five like a, it was like a thread of reasons why Chris Hacker was a NASCAR sex god and NASCAR swag star. Um it was probably some of my best work that I did and then you came on and then from there the relationship started and, and began and uh we've stayed pretty tight since and then you're actually working with some people shout out to Nate. Um Nate's Big one shout of out to Nate. Yeah, it's one of our great buddies, Nate Blazell. Uh, love him to death. And uh, you guys are, are just – you're killing it right now. And you're working in and out, and you got races coming up, which is going to be exciting. We're going to talk a little bit about that. But, uh, but yeah, you know, I think that there's room now. Like, the, the short hair game has grown on me. I, I want to just call you, like, white boosie. Like, you kind of have I'm, that boosie look. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. I'll roll right. with it. I'll right, put it on boosie. the name real next we'll time. We'll call you boosie. Woosie, right. right. <laughs> right. 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 that's it we're gonna get some new stuff but yeah i know dale so dale should have a list of a couple of races that you have coming up i want to go over those and and then let, let's just break this down like i'm ready to talk a little bit about racing about where the mentality's at where your head's at this year because it seems like the confidence level is higher than ever you're feeling good you just got oh, yeah. to run daytona which had to be like what what, what did that do for you, like just being on that track in the truck, knowing where you are, what weekend it was, how was that for Chris Hacker? So on, the start of Daytona was honestly a terrible time. Like we didn't find out I was running until about the Tuesday before. And I was with the guys at the shop trying to grind it out, uh, swapping motors around, put my own seat in and stuff like that. So it was really stressful right at first. And then – Practice went well, and then we had a miss up in qualifying. So until the very end of qualifying, my world was kind of just spiraling a little bit. But then whenever I found out we made the race, it was huge, huge relief off my shoulders. So um, we made the race, started running it. It was it was so badass, honestly. Coolest, coolest experience ever, like just being able to like feel the wind, like push against the truck and everything, and then, you know, getting up to the guys in front of you from the draft, it was Honestly, like a once in a lifetime opportunity. Super thankful, super blessed I've been able to do it. Um, hopefully, as many more times to come. But uh, just you know, being able to finally say I did it after all the years of working towards it is really, really humbling. So, so I'm I'm very thankful, dude. So uh, the biggest thing is you survived, right? Like these yeah, truck survived. races, the <laughs> truck races are just insane. Obviously, we hate how that one ended. I'm sure you could have gained a lot more positions had we not had that rain, which was the mm -hmm. most frustrating thing to ever attend. Honestly. Um, but we look forward to the future now. A lot of people wonder about the Morgan & Morgan sponsorship, right? Like, you got the mm -hmm. shirt. Uh, we got to meet some of those guys at a, a party that was celebrating you, which was awesome, by the way. Um and Talk about the Morgan and Morgan partnership and where that came from and how it's grown and and helped your career. And uh, it, it's just been crazy and really, really cool to see. And and uh, just let us know. Let some people know who aren't so sure about how this came along. Like, what is the partnership like? Where did it come from? 
So as far as Morgan and Morgan, they are like one of America's largest injury law firm. They handle all sorts of different things, such as like car wrecks, birth injuries, medical malpractice, you know, you, you name it. If you're injured, they take care of it. Um, but as far as like connecting with them, it was a year ago from Daytona this year. So it would have been last year's Daytona. I was working for one of the teams and we invited them out to come meet me because they're they're mainly based out of Orlando and Daytona. And I was able to meet Jack, Alex, and Dan. They're uh, one of like the one of the top top dogs over there at Morgan and Morgan. And uh, ever since then, the relationship kind of built. Um, it it luckily has been a very good work relationship we built. And then also I've been kind of uh, been able to become friends with them too, which is very very thankful for they they kind of you know they're really wise people so they kind of help me get through life my my personal life itself but um yeah they came off for a couple races last year kind of a wasn't really planned but it was kind of planned it was it was kind of like last second planned I guess on the races last year but they finally were like all right we're gonna take a shot on you and and lock in like you know some races all the way from the beginning of the year to the end of the year and that right there just helps me a lot as a driver because beforehand I was getting out of the seat and it was like, all right, what do we have to do for the next race? Where is the next race? How soon are we going to lock in the next race? Yada, yada, yada. But now it's like I can hop out of this seat and I know I got to go home and start testing at this one track or I got to start watching film at this track. And so like, it makes, it makes being a driver a little bit more smooth and on like the mental side and stuff like that. And you know, they're just, I mean, they're really great people all the way around, whether, you know, if God forbid this doesn't work out in the long run, like I'm still probably going to be friends with them for the rest of our lives and stuff. They're just really great people to be around. And, you know, for what they do for kids like me is remarkable. If it wasn't for people like them, I would have never had my second chance of being in the race cars. So like just all around the, the spectrum, it's just a great synergy over there. Yeah, I love that too. When we were there, we we got to meet Jack and I know Jack gave Jack gave the most in-depth story of you and the partnership that came together. I mean, like dude, it was it, it was the most vivid. I, he painted the picture. Yeah, yeah. I, have, I have a mural in my mind of <laughs> from, that, from that from that uh whole conversation. <laughs> and and I know that we we don't talk about it a ton because it's just like it, it's something that's really, you know, not even there, but there was a disability that you did have like coming into this with your arm and and mm. forgive me, I don't know the exact name of it, but I do know yeah. that it inhibits you you're not supposed to be able to drive with like you know two hands like you and you call yourself the one arm bandit and I just think it's <laughs> badass and I just yeah, yeah. but yeah. what what is the, what is the name of the disability and and like what it, like in the quickest way possible like, like explaining it for anybody like what what does it inhibit you from? So medical terms it's called brachial plexus injury and long story short what that is is nerve damage. And it can either be caused from birth or, um, you know, serious accidents, um, very common in motorcycle wrecks. The way it happens is you have nerves that connect your major spinal cord to your arms. And when your head goes the other way and your shoulder goes the other way, it ruptures or tear those nerves. So mine, uh, C5 and C6 got uh, torn and then C7 had, was ruptured which ultimately just caused me to have only movement in my fingertips and then I had three surgeries where they took nerves out of my calves and ankles and they did tendon transfers um, around in my wrist to make it where I have about like 60 to 70 percent range of movement which super thankful for that they were able to do it it was kind of a the nerve grafting and tendon transfers was kind of more of like a practice back then uh wasn't really done much before so they were kind of just going out on a limb quote unquote and so ended up working it's, I'm kind of to the peak on where I can be as far as like you know more uh you know benefits to surgeries and stuff like that but with the lack of movement it comes with like lack of muscle and stuff I don't with I'm not able to do like certain things like yeah I can't bench press push-ups I can kind of do but they're more like one-arm push-ups I guess so like just kind of affects me in the long run as far as like building muscle and stuff like that as far as in the race car um 
biggest problem I've had so far is just, you know, having to like shift at certain times, uh, just holding the wheel with my left hand. It's not really that strong and stuff. So when I lost like power steering at St. Louis, my first race, uh, when I was shifting, I was actually like using my leg to just like hold my arm. Like I'd put my knee on the left side of my hand and like just pinch it up against the wheel to like make sure the wheel wasn't cranking to the left when I would take my right hand off to like shift it. So like that's been the biggest struggle, but I mean, like I've had it my whole life, so I can't really like, I guess, uh, compare it to what it would be like to have like the two normal functioning arms, but it's, in the long run, it's just all about adapting to your environment and stuff like that. So, dude, so wait, that was your first race in the truck series when that happened? Yeah, and I was killing myself, bro. Oh my god, <laughs> the first race, yeah, racing yes. all the power steering, bro, with no was, power steering. How strong are yeah. your legs, bro? Uh, oh, bro, I got bro, I be squatting. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I mean, no. I drive with my knee on the air. <laughs> yeah, same. About 80, 80, 80, 85, maybe max. Racing a bro. fucking truck. With, like, dude, bro, that bro. is that is insane. See, like, that's the, the leaps and bounds and the differences of, like, I want to do something and I kind of maybe want to try this. Like, you know what the fuck you want to do. And that's why yeah. I love you, dog. I mean, dude, that bro. balls, bro. It's all about adapting to the environment, bro. Got to Gotta do what you got to do. Hell yeah. So, I'll love so talk, talking about Gateway, uh, we know you're going to be back at Gateway this year. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your schedule for 2023, what you have going on, uh, who you're going to be working with, anything that you can reveal to us now, and any new Chris Hacker fans and current fans that may want to know where they can catch you in the Truck Series this year. So right now we have North Wilkesboro, Gateway, Lucas Oil, bristol and phoenix 100 percent locked in with morgan morgan ready to go we have um about two or three more that are locked in financially we're just trying to pick and choose which tracks we're going to hit and then uh we're in the late stages of finalizing um an xfinity race or two here and there um just trying to with the limited budget still we're just trying to figure out where the best places are going to be to hit and with what teams and stuff so um but we have a lot more races than we've ever had in a year um so i mean like i said earlier the best part about all of this is already knowing where i'm going to be and already being able to prepare, prepare for what's next but um i'm super excited for north Wilkes pro and, and irp that's going to be my two two favorite ones i love the short track racing yeah you you raced irp last year um mm -hmm. in in that number 30 truck and that was an awesome experience. We couldn't believe how much fun we had that that night uh, during that truck race. And then, yes, North Wilkesboro. That's gonna be yeah. bad. Bro. We're all so pumped about North Wilkesboro, dude. Yeah. Have you seen the Have you seen the like recent videos and stuff of them like redoing the track? I've seen some Harris Lou stuff that he's put out, like just kind of like yeah. promotion designing and stuff like that. But I mean, it, the main thing we know is like the Winston, you know, the big Winston logo on the uh, on the big wall. I'm I'm interested to see what they do with that because I've heard some people talk about um, a couple of people like with the networks talking about how they're going to try to cover that up. You know, yeah, is it not down? It's still up. Yeah, they they're not going to take that off there, dude. That's, that's history, man. I don't uh, think they're gonna I don't know, I dude. Like, that, they really don't like, like Winston. Take it off. Yeah, they can't be rolling with that no more nowadays. Right. Yeah. I, I feel like, see, I was wondering, I've seen a little bit like the, it's a complete repave. So that'll mm -hmm. be interesting. And it's just really cool to see uh, outside of the all-star race, seeing the truck series back there too. So it's going to be an electric weekend, dude. I, I'm is so the truck excited. Is it a night race? Do y'all know? Oh, I do not. I would not. think it is though. Is it on? I, I would hope so. Is it Friday night or is it, is it Saturday? Saturday, I believe. Let me see. Ooh. Great. Saturday might make me think it'd be a day race. Uh, it's at one thirty. That's depressing. I would much rather night race, but me too. Well, I guess I guess they're looking at it like uh, Cup is going to be night race. Yeah, for the All Stars, yeah. so they'll have a daytime as well with trucks. I'm a little Understand. upset. I can't get my George sweat on Truck Night in America in North <laughs> I feel like that would be a great place to do it. This would be a lot uh, of butt dude. crack sweat out there at one o'clock in the day, dude. That's gonna be rough. It's gonna be a long day. You have to have the baby powder on deck. 
Oh yeah, dude. Ooh, yeah, oh, we didn't do that. Yeah. Me, me and Dale, we putting deodorant like inside of our legs, getting ready. Oh yeah. For the long hauls, you know. Oh yeah. No, yeah. no chafing around here. Uh-uh, we can't. <laughs> dude, I'm telling you, that's, that's dude, it's time. the worst. That can be it's the time. worst. I wanted yeah. to tell you, Dale. R.I.P. to your your shades that you got lost at Earp. Uh, R.I.P. Oh, we Earp? lost his shades at Earp. Yeah. Dude, that's whoever crazy. whoever took those is just the worst, man. Do you, you got them finessed or you lost them? I was celebrating when Grant Enfinger won, mm-hmm. and they they fell, and I I somebody just picked him up. Like somebody definitely saw me down there because we were by the fence, and they were just like, "Oh, he dropped the shades, mine, bitch!" Like <laughs> that. that yep, exactly. So whoever that person <laughs> is, I I hate you, but. <laughs> You know, whatever I get it. Finders keepers, right? They got got to hold the L sometimes. I don't like that finders keepers rule, man. Sometimes if I see if I ever saw somebody that like took something from me that I own, I'd be like, hey, I like run them down the middle of a Walmart. <laughs> see, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah well, if to. if I could have, if I could have, same thing. If I would have seen the person, I immediately would be like, dude, those are fucking mine. I want them back right I think now. You like go up to anybody that has shades that look remotely close to that and confront them, no matter where yeah. you are or what's happening. Like the rest of you, I, I agree. I agree with Chase 100%. Yeah. Uh, that's okay. Even, I'll even if it's a little kid, just like start confronting them. That's what it's I like. With their mind. Oh, man. I don't know. I, I We're a friendly program around here. We don't want to, we don't want to bully some kids like that. True. You know what I mean? Like, true. True. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, I know that you would be happy to run just about any race that, that, you know, you could get a sponsorship for and run to. So mm-hmm. we know the races that you already go into. What are three tracks that you haven't raced at that are like bucket list for you? Like, what are three tracks that you you want to run, or, or tracks that you feel really confident maybe doing on simulation or i racing, or just since you've been a kid? What are the three tracks that you haven't ran that you want to run? Uh, I'd run on Dega. I really like the super speedways. Um, let me look at the list here. I want to run Charlotte in the truck. I ran Charlotte in Arca, and it was it was a pretty good time. I feel like I would do good there. Um, no, I remember that you got a top ten only Arca start, right? Yeah, uh, it was it's crazy. My, it was my second one, but yeah, yeah. second. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Um, but and then trucks don't go there anymore. But the Glen, bro, I am absolutely a demon at the bus stop at the Glen. I can always like gain like two, three car links there on iRacing. So. Hopefully one day trucks come back or I can get an Xfinity right there or something. The shifting might be a little bit of a problem, but I'm sure I could work my way around it. But you think those you think those two or three tents on iRacing will translate in real life? Oh, bro. I mean, as long I mean, I'm sure I would need a little bit of practice in the real life seat, but I'm sure I'm sure after a little bit I could I could figure it out how to, you know, dive it in there, hit the it's a little aprons real nice and just fucking swinging around as, as many as I could. Dude, I just I just think about Robbie Gordon going through the grass trying to get by Kurt Bush that one time. <laughs> yeah. Ambrose and Keslowski going to the oh, that's a great that's gotta be like one of the best corners in all of stock car racing. Is oh, that, yeah. that bus stop? 100%. All I can think about is like you like driving every race with your knee now. Like that's yeah. all in my mind. Just like should I just, baby should just, I just do that? Like, like just hold hold on to the headrest, use the left knee for, for steering the right leg for gas. I just think it would be, it's the most baller thing in the world. Like you're like, <laughs> everybody's like dude, two handed on this bit. You're just like, bitch, I'm whipping. Right. Here. <laughs> <So> just, like, <laughs> <Sunday drive. laughs> yeah, dude. Like I, I think it's dope as hell, but no, I love those tracks, man. Talladega is obviously one that, that we're close to. That's like our home track is what we consider. So we always have a great, yeah. um, we we'll love, I cool mean, thing. You know, there you need to come coolest thing about Dega is like you have that whole front stretch like the the start and finish line is way later so you could always get a big run down the front stretch for the line and like so that always makes great finishes over there yeah and- yeah we've seen nothing but pandemonium in the truck races there as of recently too so oh, yeah. opens up some room for some of the smaller teams man never forget exactly. Tate. Fo- where were you when when uh tate fogelman won fall of 2021 were you there <laughs> I was not there, but who who won when – somebody should have won. When, or was it Matt DiBenedetto that should have won last year? Oh, okay, yeah. So, DiBenedetto was, did win, but Brett Holmes yeah, should have won. Yeah, they didn't throw the caution. Yeah, he should have won, but, but yeah, Dega's always great. I love watching Dega. Yeah, yeah. Dega's fun. 
Uh, I've won money. That was the I think that was the first thing that I ever did a long time ago. We had, we had a pool as a fan there at the race. Me and like all my dad's friends. And all yeah. race. Yeah. So that's what got me into being like, okay, I can I think I can I do this truck stuff, right? He said, he said I can do it. I can do yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I usually take his picks on truck night. So yeah. he, he it, made it, it, the trucks, yeah. It's been I a mean, tough start to twenty twenty three. Your genie TikToks or whatever, like the to the NASCAR gods, always get me rolling, bro. Oh, uh, oh, oh! Uh, my buddy Winston, the NASCAR wizard. Yeah, yeah, the NASCAR wizard. He'll be back. He'll be back. He's gonna be in and out. He might show up at Talladega, dude. I don't know. I may not go. I may just let Winston go. <laughs> yeah. Place, who knows? Uh, that'd be a good place for him. I appreciate oh, yeah. that, though, man. I we, I, d- you know, Dale and I both we do put we try to put a lot of time and a lot of creativity and into what we do and, and to bring it here. And I mean, and you've got your, everybody's got their style and their swag and their presentation. I mean, you've got yours too. I, I was checking out some of your new merch, by the way, where, where can everybody buy like your merchandise and support you and, and what you have going on? Uh, it's just where's my merch.com forward slash Chris Hacker. Okay. Where's my uh, merch. Where's my merch.com. Yep. Did you buy that or is that like a like an online store? No, yeah, it's uh so I don't know if you met Joey yet, one of the guys I work with, but uh like Joey, Nate, and like Chris Thompson, they're like they used to be like in rock bands and stuff like that. And they used to do merch stuff with him and so they just they linked me up with him and and yeah, so Okay. That explains the aesthetic because I've seen some of them. I'm definitely gonna buy like a, that one arm bandit shirt. Oh yeah. One arm bandit, hundred percent. I don't dude, know you, you totally know, you totally uh, spaced order too. You totally spaced on uh, on that nickname when I asked you about nicknames earlier. Yeah, oh, but it doesn't hit right. Can you give yourself a nickname though? Like is it really a nickname if you give yourself it? Is that so? You gave yourself that nickname. Is the that... one arm bandit, yeah. I I yeah, I was I was the one who like kind of like Pulled pull that pulled that one off, but okay, I, it wasn't like a fan or anything like that, so I can't really count it. You know what I mean? We can call you OAB, like one OAB, OAB. acronym so it up. Yeah, <laughs> acronyms are fun. I like Hacker Man three thousand just because of Power Man three thousand. You know that um, one song? That works, for me, man. NASCAR Thunder two thousand four opening oh, yeah. song, by the way. But beautiful. I don't know. I think like that's a sick nickname. So I think. Why don't you guys comment and let us know if it's okay? Because I think it's a sick enough name. Like, even if you came up with it, it's like, it could still yeah. work, you know? It works. Like, yeah. Which, by yeah. the way. If majority votes, then we'll, then we'll run with it. Yeah, yeah. Let us know in the comments, guys, what you think. If if it's acceptable for Chris to be called the one-armed bandit, uh, even though he gave it to himself. <laughs> but look, we, we, we've figured out your schedule, um, talked about some tracks you aspire to run at. Whenever you're not racing... And I feel like we've run into each other at the track a lot. Like even mm-hmm. when you haven't been like in an entry in the truck series, what are you doing at the track? Like I've heard that you are a grinder, man. Like you work, you work really, really hard. So what are you doing when you're not racing and still at the racetrack on the weekends? So it kind of really depends, um, you know, what's available. Like if a team wants me to work, I'll, I'll go work, do some tire stuff for them. Um, I've spotted a couple of times here and there, but, um, I, for the majority, like, like towards late last year and, and this year, I kind of just more go to enjoy it, I guess, just to like be a fan at the end of the day. Um, when you start doing more races throughout the season and stuff, you're more, you're more tied in into the driver aspect. So it's like kind of nice to take a step back and, and be a fan rather than a driver at the track, but being a driver gets you the perks of getting in the pits so i get to i get to hang out down there instead of the stands but um but yeah i mean if anybody hits me up for like work and stuff i I gladly go and work but um like the roval last year i was just hanging out you know chilling with people um it's just all about enjoying the scenery you know like at the end of the day like this is a job and so like just being able to to reel it back in the the fun side of it is, is really refreshing you know, the thing that just stuck out to me there, you've done some spotting before. Uh, yeah. how, would you, how would you grade your – first of all, how would you – how is that? Like, 23 years old as a spotter, I feel like that's <laughs> pretty high pressure. And number two, how would you grade yourself in your two times – you said twice as a spotter? 
Uh, yeah, maybe three times. I don't know. It was it was a while ago. My last time I spotted, but my first time spotting actually, um, it was a very like it was it was a wake up call on like how hard it is to be a spotter. So it was the Daytona test session for Cup, and I was spotting for Jacques Villeneuve, and I was like. I was like, I got this. I was like, I did this stuff in like late models, easy peasy. And then like once they get on the track, like you're like leaning forward, squinting your eyes, like pulling out the binoculars. Like you can't see anything from like turn one to turn four. And like, and then when they're coming towards you out of turn four, like you can't really tell like where they're at side by side, like if they're at their bumper or not. So big wake up call. I, I gained a lot of respect for spotters. Like once I got into that, but um as far as what i'd grade about i mean I'd, I'd give myself a solid solid eight you know i'll, I'll bump it down to a, a 7.5 because you know there's always there's always room to learn but um you know modest, i was helping modest. i was helping shock you know learn about the draft and stuff and and having him barrel into pit lane if he had to do a green flag stop and he locked him up once and he started fishtailing and i don't know if he needed new undies but i sure did because i was like I was, I was like, tell me you almost me. made a Formula One legend shit his pants. I I don't know. Well, <laughs> I, I he 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 started fishtailing and he he ended up saving it. And I was like, I was like, good job, Jacques. But I was like, I was like, you know, like back it up a little bit more next time. We're like, you know, don't don't get on the brakes too hard. And he comes back on the radio. He's like, oh, that was a piece of cake. And I was like, I was like, that was not a piece of cake, dog. I was like, I was up here almost crying. I was like that. Not a piece of cake at all, but dude, that is that is amazing, and yeah. uh, the pressure on top of doing it for the first time, but also they give you Jacques Villeneuve, like yeah, that's bro. crazy, um, dude. Um, I didn't yeah, know that. Was. Yeah, it was it was a fun time. And then I spotted for Loris Hesman a couple times. It was pretty cool. Uh, I was able to give him like tips while he was going around Phoenix for the test session there and stuff. But yeah, it's a lot of pressure, honestly. Like my after after doing that Daytona. Uh, test session i i definitely gained a lot a lot of, i mean i obviously respect the spotters before but it puts you in a whole new situation when you're able to be in their shoes at that point so absolutely yeah wow. I, I can only imagine man i i know we, we know tab boy pretty well over at uh over at jtg it's one of our, our, our guys and yeah they they make it sound just like it's just another day it's another thing but like yeah you don't know it, it is yeah it is not bro not another day at all <laughs> dude yeah like like tj majors is a guy that i feel like when i was in my teenage years he he had dale jr right and i was a huge dale jr guy and when i would listen to tj majors i mean he was just lights out like so good so calm so collected and i was just mm -hmm. like wow like that'd be so cool to be a spotter man i bet it's not that hard and <laughs> I, over over like the years of, of of getting more involved in the industry and testaments like what you just said now i'm like yeah i don't think i would ever do it if i even had if, if i was ever even offered which would be zero yeah. percent chance like the, no the way. worst the worst part of it is like i mean everything's practically in your hands if like if you say clear and he's not clear, bro, that is all on you pretty much. Because, I mean, the driver – I mean, for me as a driver personally, I think I should 100% trust the spotter. You know, where what he says, I do. If he says I'm clear, I'm clear. Like, I'm not – I'm not going – like, especially at super speedways. If homie says, like, clear outside and you're trying to get in the hole, like, you're not going to take that extra half second to check the mirror to make sure you're clear. You're, you're going to react when you hear clear. So, like – if you if you mess up, you're messing up big. So so you just you gotta make sure you cross your T's and dot your eyes there. Oh Dude, yeah, and thinking about like when fans like get get really pissed off of, are pissed off at drivers like when they when they make a mistake like that, right? Like mm -hmm. say they clear themselves, right? They yeah. don't realize probably that a lot of that is maybe a spotter error, dude. Like, yeah, yeah, a lot of it is, but I mean sometimes I'm sure sometimes the drivers do know what they're doing like every now and then like sure sure like denny for instance at, at phoenix <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. Uh, i don't i don't think his father told him that he was clear but uh he, really but yeah, checks his own mirrors. he definitely huh? he definitely checks his own mirrors he checks oh, yeah. his camps. only when uh, ross is around right it, yeah he, he's like I'll, he, don't he's worry he's got a laser got beam it. in his eyes on him Praying for that one. He just wants to see the number one, and he's done. His day is good. Oh, yeah. He's like, I'm, I'm happy now. <laughs> I love it. 
Well, yes, you were talking about just with your merch before we let you go. I know the culture's been been good lately for NASCAR. I don't know if you've been keeping up a lot, but I'm sure you see it out there. It seems like there's more celebrities, more musicians coming oh, yeah. in. Uh, you know, your last name's Hacker. Hacking and slashing. Uh, are you a fan of Ghost Man? Ghost Man? Oh, bro, I am a fan of Ghost Man, 100%. You, you know, you know uh, Bones, too? Yes, I know Bones. Yeah, oh, bro, all of that, all of that I'm down with. 100%. But what is it? Control, Alt, Delete? That's the song yeah. I listen to a lot by Bones. I like yeah. that. Um, was this, what was I listening to the other day? Let me check. Bones. Sodium. Sodium by him is pretty good. Sodium? Yeah, Sodium. I've been, that, that one's been on repeat here lately. Okay, so these guys, so, you know, we asked you about the three tracks, but I've already mentioned Ghost Man. I feel like that's a no-brainer. I would love, because mm-hmm. he does sing a song. It's Hacking and Slashing. I feel like that's yeah. a theme song for you. Um, And then what What are some of these, like, I guess, artists now? Like, obviously, rappers are, are big. More rappers are coming around. You're more into some, it's like, kind of like the rock rap scene, like myself. Mm-hmm. Big Suicide Boys guy from New Orleans. So, obviously, I'm rapping that music. And I, I know you're a little bit more in that world. What are some of those kind of artists that you would would want to see come to a race that you feel like could, could help to to continue to build this amazing culture that we have in, in the in the neon twenties as I call them? <laughs> the neon twenties, I love that. Um, I'd say my top would probably be Bones. I listen to him quite a bit, or like you know somewhere like just across like that sort of platform. Um, and then my second would probably be Kodak Black. I listen to Kodak a bunch. Um. I feel like he's super underrated. A lot of people don't like him, but he's just, he's really catchy with his lyrics. So um, definitely him. And then I don't know if you've heard of Talk. It's a new artist lately. He made a song, Run Away to Mars. It's uh, it's like an alternative type of beat, um, but he's got some really good stuff. I would, I would, I would like him to come out, but yeah, I mean, those are like kind of like three different type of artists, but but I I kind of have a broad spectrum, so so e- either of them would be ten out of ten. Kodak Black just did a, a good list. Co Wetzel too. Uh, I don't Co-Wetzel. know who Co Wetzel. He's a country artist. So Kodak, oh, yeah. I think Kodak should get to Talladega. Oh yeah, well, so when you see me in the street, I'm white, but I'm Kodak. That's what he says. <laughs> he does. Yes. Yes. I love Kodak. Kodak Black. Dude, he's like a. It, it, He's like a walking meme, dude. Like I don't listen oh, to yeah. him as much, but like his character is just incredible. Like in any any single thing I see on Twitter or TikTok, it always cracks me up. Have yeah. you seen the clip where he's talking about uh this like girl he's trying to marry and and the people are like asking him if he would be misogynistic or whatever, and they're like, you know what that means? And he's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no I Kodak don't give a shit, bro. That dude, that dude. Somebody tried to give him a Merriam-Webster's dictionary, probably when he was a child. He probably burned it in the yard for one. Oh, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Yeah, bro, he's, he ain't got time for that shit, bro. It's a little dramatic. He just decided to burn it. Yeah, it for ten like, seconds. It's, it's, it's winter time. Like, I gotta get the heat going. Yeah. Wait, he's was that, he? I get that heat going. Was he? Uh, the let me drive the boat. Was that him? You yeah. know that? Remember that? Was that him? I, okay. I think it was uh, him. Yeah. Like what? Like when he had first gotten kind of famous, right? This had to yeah. be like five, six, seven years ago. Yeah, like around like 2015, 2016. Yeah, I still say that quote randomly, just like oh, walk yeah. around my house, like it just pops up every now and then. I would, yeah. Every time I'm about to hop in the race car, I'm like, I'm about to drive the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Boosie and yes. Chris Brown were supposed to release a uh, a song called something like "Drive the Boat," and they and like during COVID, and they never released it, and it pisses me off to this day. Yeah, but Kodak, the way Kodak said it in the video, just let me drive the boat. Like, <laughs> that was, yeah, that that takes the cake. That's good. The way he talks is so funny. I love it. Oh, his stuff. Uh, the thing that I think he did a Sunday conversation with uh, Caleb Presley as well. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think I do remember that. Yeah, go watch that one too. All right, so we got Bones, Kodak Black, and then Talk. I'm definitely going to have to check out Talk, but the beauty of it is now is that we're just going to blow up Bones and Kodak and we're going to get them to race with Chris Hack. Oh, bro, 100%. I will, I will hop on that train. I already I hit up a Talk once before, but I'm pretty sure he, he replied, uh, but he's just like out of Canada and stuff, and so he's not really close to really anything, so – um, in Canada. Yeah, Bone, Bones and Kodak are going to be the next ones. Do you know Therapy Gecko by chance? Therapy Gecko? Yeah. That's what a name. 2023 shit, dog. I have no <laughs> what a name. Like, he, he's, not, he's not a music artist, but uh, 
what he does is he gets in a green gecko suit, paints his face green, and like every Tuesdays and Thursdays, he's on Twitch for like two, three hours, and people call in. I've seen him. Wait, yeah, you know I've, no. I've seen him. I've seen him on TikTok. I've seen I, his clips on TikTok before. I listen to his Spotify podcast every time I'm on like road trips to races, and I I've, I've been like in his DM so much. Like me and him have chit chat back and forth. He's out of LA, so uh you know the only race he's really close to is the coliseum race but i i i really want him out to a race real bad that would that would make race. a whole year he, i think gotta wear the, suit too. the best because you have geico it's the geico 500 you have the gecko there and then he is oh, a therapy okay. gecko they could fight and oh I yeah that we would see the superior gecko leave i, Talladega. I think he would win yeah. i i think he'd win too 100 <laughs> percent this is a crazy world we live in, man. I gotta, I just gotta point that out. This is also <laughs> garage talk, so the pinnacle of crazy NASCAR world talk. Um, you gotta love it. I do too, but dude. Thank you so much for being on, Chris. It's always good to have you, my man. This has been fun, and it's always good to catch up. We can't wait to see you again. North Wilkesboro is going to be electric, and oh, uh, yeah. and and stay posted as well, guys and girls that are watching this with Chris. You know, uh, where can everyone follow you at? Uh, so Twitter is Chris Hacker underscore Instagram is Chris underscore Hacker and then Facebook is just Chris Hacker Motorsports. Love it, man. All right, guys. Well, you know what to do from there. Go make sure you give Chris a follow. Get out to a race. And uh, and this has been Garage Talk. We appreciate you. We love you. And we will see you again soon. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it.